Well, well, well. It's been a while, huh? So, I was just out of my parents' place doing a little winter gardening. Check it out, we're wintering over. <clears throat> Decided not to really grow anything in the cold season this year, so there's not a whole lot going on in the garden. A lot of things like pine straw and debris and whatnot have fallen down, and we've just let it happen. Uh, what we're getting is some really rich black dark beds, and uh, a number of things have um, incorporated themselves. We have a lot of little mushrooms popping up. There are some dead bugs and dead animals even that I've found that are uh, just becoming a part of the soil. That's what it's about, making soil. So anyway, here we are after a, a, some time away. And uh, anyhow, I'm feeling good. It's a beautiful day, it's about 60 degrees, so it's warm enough for me to do a little planting. I'm gonna plant this here, poinsettia. Well, we called it, always called it poinsettia, but it's kind of spelled poinsettia, poinsettia. Um, I think this is native to Mexico, Euphorbia pulcherima, uh, in the family Euphorbiaceae, Euphorbiaceae. Yeah, it's a lot of vowels. Um, anyway, my mom had this big, beautiful uh, specimen here sitting up in her uh, kitchen. So she said, why don't you plant that somewhere down in the, uh, in the garden, which I think I'm going to do uh, right now. So anyhow, this is, uh, like I said, it's native to Mexico, and I read that the Aztecs were really the first to, um, to cultivate it. But it's, uh, it's very diverse. It's, it's known for uh, having this great red and green um, foliage and flower. It's sort of that multi-flower, um, especially in and around Christmas time, which is why people like buying them. My mom loves a good um, <laughs> poinsettia, poinsettia. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is incorporate it in the ground. She, I guess, heard from someone that you can plant them in the ground and they do just great. So let's, uh, let's figure out where we're gonna put them. So <clears throat> right here, what we have is a pretty gnarly looking scraggly kind of, um, I can't even see that section, uh, rose bush. And of course this rose uh, wants a lot of light and it's not getting it here. Uh, just look at this guy. Yeah, kind of scraggly. Last year I trimmed this thing off about knee high and it sent out more runners and it does have a beautiful flower to it, but this one doesn't really have aroma. And um, also just in this spot, I don't think it's going to get enough light. Uh, you, viewer, are sitting in a redbud tree, small redbud right now, and behind me we've got this big old rhododendron. Um, in uh, cooperation with these two Japanese maples that we have here, uh, this little pocket only gets a couple of hours in the afternoon of sunshine. So what I'm hoping is to put the poinsettia in here, and uh, I don't necessarily want it to get real big and huge. Also, we just don't have six to eight hours of sunlight in this garden. So I'm gonna have to kind of do the best that I can. I'm gonna pull this rose bush up. I'm gonna put uh, some compost, a little bit of fertilizer, and, uh, and something special in there. And then um, I'm going to put the poinsettia in, and I hope that it looks uh, it looks really good here for years to come. So, uh, here we go. So, right now I don't have a bag of compost or anything like that to uh, incorporate in the hole here. But I'm going to take out this rose bush and I'm going to incorporate a Euphorbia pulcherima into the ground. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our composter. I'm going to grab the dregs of whatever kind of stuff I can find in the bottom of that and uh, incorporate that into the bottom of the hole. Now, I'm gonna use a new technique here. Something I saw when I was watching around online. There's a guy I, I watched um, who was creating his own food forest in New Zealand. It's always New Zealand. And he used a uh, roadkill that he found to put in the bottom of holes that he planted things like fruit trees in when he was establishing his food forest. So what I found here in our garden was a dead bird friend. Now, when one has windows like this, you're often going to see birds collide into it and, uh, and end up like this in your garden. So instead of taking this bird and burying them at the edge of the yard, which is something I might have done uh, in years past, I'm going to use this technique and put the bird at the very bottom of the hole, put the compost on top of the bird, and then put the poinsettia in there and backfill with the rest of the dirt. Doing stuff like this is going to incorporate death and rot into the cycle. That's what it's all about. I'm not saying we should be useful in death, but we can be incorporated into this life cycle, right? So I think that's a, um, <clears throat> a good way to go. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull off all this pine straw, what have you here. And we're gonna see if we can't get this Euphorbia pulcherima in the ground.
Well, I lost a couple. But what are you gonna do? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that red, really, really nice. And now we get a little bit of color in the garden, especially for it being January, the dead of winter. So what I did, pulled everything back, dug a hole, put the bird cadaver in the very, very bottom. Then I put a little bit of compost. It was a little wet, so I kind of chopped it up and mixed it up with a little bit of um, the browns that we have sort of on the side of the house here. And then I put soil on top of that, put the poinsettia in and uh, filled it back up, covered it back up. You always want to redress at the end so it doesn't look like the thing was just put in right here. So whatever was there before, pine straw in this case, leaves, uh, allow, uh, allow, yeah, there we go. Allow that to um, sort of be the dressing afterwards so it looks like it's been here all along. Then of course, Whatever you lose along the way, just a couple of little arms. You can see there's plenty more and I'm sure it'll keep growing. Um, we'll take this, we'll put this over in the potato mound or just somewhere where it can break down. It's the beauty of the garden, right? So all stuff is always breaking down. You reincorporate, turn it into something else. Another good day of gardening.